It's tea time, ladies. Who's ready? We are going to have a good day today. So, our tea time disclaimer. Tea time is when we talk the real and we don't mince words. So, we're going to talk today about food addiction. Um, it might be a hard one for me. I'm going to share with you guys, oh, some of the things I used to do. Some of the things I'm still trying to stop doing. And uh, some of the ways that food really controlled my life. So today we are going to have some black licorice spice tea. And we're going to talk about our food addictions, our food obsessions, the ways that we let food control us. So I think this is going to be a good one. Um, I won't lie, this might be kind of a little bit of a hard chat for me because a lot of the things that I used to do with food and around food were secret. <laughs> The only thing that made that stuff okay is that nobody else knew you were doing it. Like, it was the secrecy of it that made it okay that I was hoarding food and stockpiling food and becoming obsessive about food in ways that I never really should have. Now, what I want to talk to you guys about today is does that just go away? Do those tendencies, those obsessions, those ways of dealing with stress, does it go away or is that something that we're always working on? So I'm just going to get my cameras all adjusted now that we got our tea and we are ready to start chatting. So I was talking with a lady this morning and we were chatting about some of the ways that we used to obsess about food. Now, we originally started talking about it because we were talking about yesterday's cookie recipe. So one minute cookies and you only make six little cookies, like six little bite-sized cookies. And she said, you know what, that's a great idea, Dory. Yesterday I made a full batch of cookies and I sat down and I ate them all. So it is still possible to overeat on keto foods. I mean, you're less likely to do it if you're eating a high fat content, but it's still possible. So are these still things that we deal with or does keto just magically fix all of our food issues? Like poof, there you go. You know, your fairy godmother shows up around the corner and goes, ping, you have no more cravings. So I wanna talk to you guys about that because in my personal experience, those things haven't gone away. I've just learned how to manage them differently. And I, I had, uh, you guys are going to giggle. Give me a second to take a sip because this one's going to take a second to get out. I had a really funny thought today when I was chatting this morning. And I thought, you know what? Our relationship with food isn't very much unlike a relationship that has turned sour. So bear with me for a minute. This is going to be a thought train and we're going to get there. Um, how many of us have been, say for example, in a relationship with a man who was unfaithful and perhaps he says he's sorry and he's not going to do it again and we move on from there and we try to make a healthy relationship. But what happens then every time you get upset, every time you're under stress, then it brings back those old feelings that you never dealt with, that you just kind of glazed over and every time you're upset, then you're thinking the same old thoughts. And I feel like it's almost the same way with my relationship with food. Now, I'm working on healing my relationship with food and I feel like we're all kind of in that process of healing our relationship with food. But what happens when we're under stress? Do we go back to the same old um, binge eating habits? Do we make something knowing full well we're going to eat that whole batch of cookies or you know do we make a whole batch of ice cream knowing you know what I'm having a bad day I'm, I'm going to eat that and I'm going to eat it all so for me I think one of the easiest ways to conquer binge eating and overeating is to only make the amount of food I'm going to eat 
Now, that was a hard one for me. <laughs> I won't I won't lie. I I was raised by a mother who always cooked for an army and there's always tons of leftovers and you can't waste that food, right? I mean, we can't we can't be wasteful. If there's extra, then we have to eat that so that it doesn't get wasted. And I think in my old life, I kind of used that as an excuse to eat more. If I made extra and there was extra left over, well, then I could eat it because it wasn't wasting it, right? So I've had to really learn about making the proper amount of food. What is a portion? What is a serving? How much am I going to eat? And I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I, I know that you would think that after weight loss surgery, when I could eat less, that maybe that means I would obsess less over food, right? Because you're only allowed a small amount. I, I would totally obsess about that less. Only the exact opposite thing happened. <laughs> I think sheerly based on the small amount of food I was able to consume, I I became more possessive over my food and and then began a series of things I don't really want to talk about, but they happened, so I guess we have to go there. Oh my god, Dory, why? Okay. So because I could only eat a small amount of food. I would usually dish up more than I could eat, knowing that I will eat this much now, and in 20 minutes, I will finish the plate. But because there was only a couple of tablespoons of food left on my plate, more often than not, somebody would decide that was garbage, and they would throw it away. My food. My food. <laughs> that was that was my food my food and then and then you have a fit in public like a two-year-old because what else do you do when you're so obsessed with your food so i'm going to share an actual real life story with you guys because i think you'll laugh at this one i was at my nephew's wedding lovely wedding they had a buffet dinner and i dished myself up a piece of turkey about that big i had one pierogi that i cut in half I had one half of a pickle and I had one piece of broccoli with dip on it, ranch dip. Now this was pre-keto, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have been eating the pierogi, but regardless. I ate half of my food and I left my son in charge while I left the table and I said, dude, don't let anybody take my food. I am, I'm not done eating that food. I'm not done eating it. Don't let anybody take my food. And he's like, okay, mom. And I come back five minutes later and I'm like, um, where's my plate? Where's my food? And he said, oh, oh, sorry, mom. I just left for a second to go get a brownie. And I think somebody threw out your plate. And I proceeded to have a fit like a two-year-old. <laughs> I'm in public. I'm at a family wedding. And I start to lose my noodle. I was like, my food, my food. Somebody threw away my food. This is your favorite story, dude. <laughs> and he was like, I left for a second to get a brownie. Do you want my brownie? And I'm like, no, I don't want your brownie. I want my food. Oh, do you want me to go make you a new plate? No, no, I don't want a new plate. I want my plate. I want my food. I want my little piece of chicken that was this big, my half of a pierogi, and my half of a piece of broccoli. Thank you very much. You can't blame anybody for thinking that you were done. You didn't have much to begin with. So. Well, and that's the thing, right? There's barely any food on the plate to begin with. If you walked by a plate of food with three, you know, little bites of stuff on it, you would assume, oh, well, I guess they're, you know, done with that plate and throw it away. But to me, that mattered because it was it was mine. Like. That was my food, my food. I, I only get to eat this much food. How dare you take my food? <laughs> so my obsession with food didn't really stop. And in the beginning, 
because I could only eat such a small amount, I wanted to hoard over that food. And then I was left eating leftovers all the time, right? Like if I dished up my plate and I didn't finish it, I had to eat it again later, but then next meal I'd wanna eat something else. So I almost always had food saved and then other people would eat it because they're like, oh, well you didn't finish your leftovers, but they were mine. They, it was my food, I, I was gonna eat it and sometimes I would leave them until they went bad. So the next time somebody else would eat them and I'd be like, I don't care if it goes rotten, it's mine. <laughs> don't. don't even look at my food. Which is funny because when I was big, I think I made a career of stealing other people's food. Like if there was an Olympic sport at stealing other people's food, I'd be bringing home the gold, baby. Bringing home the gold. So I don't, really know why I was so obsessed with food. I know that I have gotten away from that by making the amount I'm going to eat. Bottom line, I don't overeat. I don't obsess over saving that food if I make just as much as I want to eat per serving, which honestly is why I focus on a lot of single serve recipes for you guys. And also I'm the only one in my house that eats a lot of the treats and snacks and things. So if I make a large amount of them, then I end up having to keep them for longer than they're good for. But I'm curious how you guys deal with that. I mean, do you still find that in times of stress, you revert back to old eating habits? And a lot of them were not good, let's be honest. I had a lot of very not good eating habits. Um, I, I really hid a lot of food because it didn't count if nobody else saw you eat it, right? If you eat it on the road and hide the wrappers and nobody ever knows you ate that, totally doesn't even count. <laughs> totally doesn't even count. And I know that a lot of people have a hard time, even with the keto foods. They're like, yeah, I get that they're all keto foods, but I still binge eat, I still overeat. And overeating is a really hard thing to pin down because for one person, overeating might be, you know, 1,400 calories a day. But for somebody else, overeating might be 4,000 calories a day. But I think we can all agree that we know that feeling of full, right? You know when you've eaten enough to be satisfied and then when you make the choice to continue eating. Because I know I always did. Like... It's not like I thought, oh, well, maybe I'm not full. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not full. I knew I was full, but I wanted to continue eating that food. Now, the question is, is why? At, at the end of a meal, when I was already satisfied and already full, why did I still want to eat it? I had a lot of excuses in my head that I used. Um, you can't waste that. You don't want to throw that away. Um, no one else is going to eat it. A lot of reasons. And I think that I was kind of going out of my way to make those excuses accessible. When I look back on how I used to cook dinner, I always made enough for everybody plus one whole extra serving. And that whole extra serving, I would usually pick and nibble at while I was tidying up from dinner and doing the dishes because you know, it's really not enough to save and you don't wanna waste it. And I always grew up with a very strong value of we don't waste food, right? We don't, we don't waste food. My mom never had extra money to throw away. And I was always very, huh, almost, and, and, I, and I think probably definitely, even a little bit overboard with that, with my son in training him that we didn't waste food. And I used to always tell him, mommy doesn't buy food for the garbage can. If you take food, then you eat that food. If you don't want to eat that food now, then you can save that food for later. And he would put his plate in the fridge and off he would go and come back when he felt like eating it later. But this is the story that made me realize I went a little overboard. I love admitting my flaws. This is awesome, by the way, just saying, like... Well, it's your fault and 
<laughs> better, better my flaws than yours. Oh. Well, it's not, it's, it's not really your flaw. I'm the one who taught it to you. So you can't really blame yourself for being obsessed over saving food when I taught you to save food. <laughs> Do you want to come around the corner and join the story? I'm good. You're good? You're good? Okay. So Isaac was spending the weekend at my mom's house and I was talking to her on the phone and they had had bacon and eggs and toast, I think, for supper the night before. And Isaac wasn't able to eat all of his food. He put the plate in the fridge. And I'm talking to my mom on the phone. And he says, Grandma, can I have some of my food? And she said, oh, yeah, go grab it. He ate the bacon. And he said, Grandma, can I put this in the fridge and save it for later? I can't eat it all. And she said, oh, honey, that's okay. You could just throw that out. You've already eaten it two times. You could just throw that out. And my son started to cry. <laughs> like, I just want to save it for later, Grandma. I just want to save it for later. And she was like, fine, whatever, kid. I was just trying to be nice to you. Whatever, eat it later if you want. But because I always stressed, we don't waste food. If you aren't going to eat that now, you eat it later. So... I, I think that maybe I taught him some unhealthy habits about food as well. I, I think we all kind of do that. I'm only just now learning how to look at food in a healthy manner. So, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully there are lessons that Isaac will pick up from me now as an adult as easily as he did when he was little. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Did I break you, dude? Are you broken? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Normal is boring anyways. Whatever. Ain't nobody want to be that anyhow. So that was kind of the basis of where I learned to, you know, hoard food, keep food, not waste food. So I think that originally it came from a good place. I mean, originally it came from a desire to not waste because I grew up in a home where we didn't have extra money to waste. But I think back to my childhood and how many times, how many times are you forced to finish food that's more than you can eat? Because I know that happened to me as a kid. I mean, it's one thing if you dish up your plate and you know how much you're going to eat, but lots of times someone else would dish up your food and they don't know how much you're going to eat. And they dish you up more than you can eat. And then you're on the hook to eat it all. Because you got to clean your plate. You can't leave stuff on your plate. When I was in high school, my boyfriend was Portuguese. And I love his mother. She loved to cook. And I would, I would battle to get through the food on my plate. Because I didn't want to be rude and leave food on my plate. And as soon as I finished, she'd be like, oh, you need more food. No, 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 I don't need more food. Oh, you don't like my food? Okay, I'll have a little bit more food. So how many of those things as well, those behaviors come from our desire to be nice to other people, right? We don't want to seem rude. We don't want to be unkind. We don't want to, you know, not take the food or the treats when they offer them. So how do we go about retraining our brain when it comes to food? For me, I think the easiest part was getting rid of the sugars and the carbs because they do something to your brain. They trigger the cravings in your brain that make you want more and more and more of those things. But I will say that every day is still a daily struggle to look at food in a healthy way because I just never did. Food food was a crutch, it was for comfort, it brought lots of different feelings to my life. And it's hard to remember sometimes that food might not invoke those same feelings anymore. The foods don't taste like they used to. They might not bring you the kind of comfort that they used to. And I find for myself that dealing with stress 
in a more productive way now has been helpful. So, you know, do things that are less food related when you're under great amounts of stress. When my mother passed away, I completely turned to food and that's how I gained my 20 pounds before I started my journey. So it's really easy to fall into those traps where you're worried about different things and there are other things on your mind that seem much more important than what you're eating. You know, this one meal isn't going to kill me. That one meal isn't going to kill me. But at the end of the day, it was, it was a building up of all of these unhealthy habits that collected on top of each other. And I feel like unless I go back and address each of those things, then it's just like trying to move on in a relationship without dealing with the issues and the problems that are at hand. I mean, I could say, hey, I have a healthy relationship with food now. I eat keto. I don't eat junk food. I don't eat sugar. I don't eat carbs. But the truth is, if I quit eating keto, all of those things would come back. So have I really healed them or cured them or am I just on the path to healing? I, I would rather consider myself on the path to healing than to say, oh, look, I, I fixed my obsession with food because I know that if I started eating carbs and sugars again, those things would come back. They would. Like, I know that the binge eating would come back. The hiding of the food would come back because I never fixed those things. I just stopped doing them. And some of those things, even though we don't do them on a regular basis anymore, during times of stress, that's what we turn back to. So I would love to hear in the comments later um, what you guys do to de-stress. My favorite thing is to cook and to dance and to be silly and to make funny videos because humiliating my pets is a really lot of fun. Just saying. <laughs> And why not? Why not? That's that's what you get. That's what you get. Uh, payback. Payback for all the times you didn't let me sleep. <laughs> for all the times you peed on my carpet. For all the times you dug in the garbage. Payback. <laughs> oh, so awesome. So I want to kind of go back a little ways and talk about some of the things that I did with food because it's one thing to say, oh, hi, I'm addicted to food and I was obsessed with food and it's something else to, you know, talk about the kinds of things that we did. I would do things like I would buy a one pound chocolate bunny for my two year old son, knowing that he wasn't going to eat that so that I could. Right? Then I could just buy myself the little bunny and be all responsible, but really eat his. <laughs> and then later when he was sad and he was like, where all my bunny go? I'd be like, I buy you a new one. And then I would eat that one too. <laughs> I know, isn't it rude? You know what? Grandma used to steal my pudding when I was little. And then when I'd say, mommy, you stole my pudding. She would say, no, I didn't. The pudding monster stole it. So I, I learned about stealing food from a very young age. I, I came by it naturally. You loved eating other people's food when you were little too. I was sharing. He was sharing. He was sharing. That's not stealing people's food. That's not even the same thing. And I won't lie. He would do it in such a cute way. Like... He would just come up to you when you were eating something and he'd go, mmm, mmm, <laughs> until you fed him some. <laughs> and, and he was very patient. He would stand there and mmm at you for a really long time until you felt bad and just fed him. So I think that some of 
the unhealthy things that we learn about food, we learn those things really, really young. Some of them we don't learn until we're teenagers. You know, by the time I was 10 and people started commenting on my weight, then you start hiding the food that you eat because you don't want people to know what you're eating. And I could play the, oh, well, I don't understand why I'm so fat. I, I barely eat enough to keep a bird alive because only the food that people saw counted, right? <laughs> you could eat a small portion in front of everybody and be like, oh, look at, look at how dainty I am with what I eat. And then when everybody was gone, you could eat the whole second serving and be like, oh, look at me. I only ate like that much because it didn't count. So maybe we need to think about the foods that don't count and making them count. Um, if you have an issue with what you eat, then tracking might help. Tracking your food might help, but only if you're honest with your tracker right? In my old life, I would have tracked my food and only typed in the stuff I wanted my tracker to know that I ate. So I was never really honest with myself about what food I was eating either. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't just lying to everybody else. I, I was lying to myself too about what I was eating and the portions I was eating. And I would do things like you buy an angel food cake because that's diet cake. It was fat free. And back then fat free equaled diet cake. And you could buy the cake and just, you know, eat one slice when you walked by it. And then another little sliver and another little sliver. And the next thing you notice the whole cake is gone. And you're like, Hey, who ate all my cake? Oh, me. Oh, but I didn't eat the whole thing. <laughs> Somebody else had one piece too. So I think that if we need to re-examine some of these ways that we look at food. Oh my goodness, the Sara Lee cheesecakes. <gasps> Do you remember the chocolate ones too with the frosting? And you never ate less than that whole cake. Like, come on, the whole cake was a single serve. I would buy that cake and get out a fork and eat the whole thing. And I always knew that a whole cake was not a single serving. Come on, I, I wasn't kidding anybody. I wasn't kidding myself. A serving is one piece of cake. It's not an entire cake. <laughs> oh, so one of the ways I deal with that now is if I'm craving cake, I'll make a mug cake. It's one single serving. And then I don't end up with a full cake on the counter just waiting for me to eat it. And I do find that for the most part, um, there might not be a lot of single serve recipes out there. What I generally do is I will take a family size recipe and then cut that down, take the amounts and adjust them so that I can make just one serving for me so that I can make one mug bread or one cake. Today I made, I'll show you guys what I made today. I'm pretty excited about these actually. I haven't even tasted one yet. I made some strawberry lime fat bombs today. And these ones I'll get to keep in the fridge for quite a while. But they are equal parts coconut cream, coconut oil, and coconut. And then you just blend it up together and add sweetener and flavor. So I put true lime packet in the lime one and my strawberry flavoring so that I could get a blend. And then I just put them and pipe them out together. I would say the only time I really make treats is when you guys see me make them. When I make them for a recipe for you. And they generally last me quite a while. These ones keep really, really good in the fridge. And I've made this same recipe mm, almost every season because it's just a quick, easy throw it together. The ingredients are cheap. It's easy to make. It pipes out fun. I've made it for Easter, for Valentine's, for springtime. It's just a really, really easy recipe. Now, what I do with those is I will portion them up and I will put four 
into a small plastic baggie and then set them aside. And then that way I know that four is the portion that I want to have for a treat. Hello, Miss Jessica Darling. It's so nice to see you, love. I did notice you were messaging me. So <laughs> I'll check it as soon as I'm off. But I did see your message pop up. So I'm excited to see what you want to chat about today. It's a fun day. It's a fun day. We're almost to the weekend. We have made it through this week. We are doing it, girl. We are doing it. And I know you and I have talked, Jess, about food obsession on more than one occasion and the ways that we used to hide, hoard, and be unhealthy with food. So <laughs> I know this chat is nothing new to you, girl, because we had this one a couple times, a couple times. But I think it's important for us to talk about it because whenever I discuss this with somebody new, they say, oh my God, it's not just me. It's not just me. Like, I'm not the only one who does all this weird shit with food, Dory. And it's not. Like, it's, it is never, never, never just you. Like, if you have a thought and you think, wow, I couldn't. No, I don't want anybody to know I used to do that. Chances are we all used to do it. And we just never admitted that we used to do that. Because that was the key. As long as nobody found out then that was the key. The key was in the secrecy. You could eat whatever you wanted. You could do whatever you wanted as long as you didn't get caught. <laughs> are you sorry you did it or are you sorry you got caught? <sighs> and then usually I would just pretend I didn't do that. Like, okay, how many times did you eat something and then lie and say you didn't? I have no idea where that went. I did not eat that. I don't know what you're talking about. So for myself, I feel like the first step is just being honest with myself about my food, about my habits with food, and about creating a healthier habit with food. So if this is something that you guys are struggling with as well, um, I think we're going to be discussing it semi-regularly in group, Colorful Keto Lifestyle. If you guys aren't a member of my Facebook group, come pop by. We have lots of fun. We share a lot of food and a lot of funnies. But I think that these are important issues that we need to tackle as well. And it's important for us to each share our journey with this so that the new people coming to keto realize that it's not just them. Uh, Jessica says, I threw it away because I didn't think anybody would eat it. The food was dripping down my chin and that's it, right? Like we always make that choice. But when I look back, I know I was doing it on purpose. I was making more food than I needed to so that I could have the excuse to have all of those. <laughs> oh, I love you, lady. Kathy, my firewolf after Ashton says, my evil twin made me eat all the mac and cheese. What? I'm not responsible for what she does. She's evil. <laughs> Nick says, oh my God, I can relate, relate to this and still struggle with binging. And I hear a lot of it. I hear a lot of people say they're still struggling with binge eating. And when you say that in a keto group, everybody jumps all over you like, oh, why? Why would you, you can't binge eat if you keto, you still can, dude, we can still binge eat. These are still bad habits that we have. Eating better food is a step, yes, but does it solve all of the issues that we've had with food for the last 10, 20, 30 years? It doesn't. So I don't feel like pretending it's not an issue helps anyone either. When I have seen people talk about binge eating in other Facebook groups, they get very judgy and very frowny upon it. But again, if we're just pretending we don't do it, then how do we ever stop doing it? There needs to be a safe place where we can talk about these things, where you can go to group and post, oh my God, I'm having a terrible day today. I really feel like binge eating. What can I do instead? And this is how we're able to support each other 
But the problem is, is if everyone is too afraid to stand up and say, I'm struggling with this, then we all feel like it's our personal struggle and nobody else is going through this. It's, it's just me. And it's really easy to fall into that pattern of feeling like nobody understands what you're going through. Jessabel Keto, my Jessie says, it's funny. Keto people say you cannot overeat bacon. Yes, you can. You can overeat anything. Let's be honest. We are very practiced at that. We know how to overfeed our bodies. We've done it many times over many years. This is not brand new knowledge to us. I mean, it's harder to overeat when you're eating high fat foods, but let's be honest, we're determined. Ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. <laughs> if I wanna, I'm gonna. We'll figure out a way, we get sneaky. When I was limited by my surgery, I just got sneakier. And I thought, well, I can only eat one bite of a chocolate bar now, but I can eat a bite later, and I can eat a bite later, and I can eat a bite later, and I would still manage to eat one whole chocolate bar in a day. And nibbling, oh my God, Jessica, yes, the nibbling. Because it never really counted as a meal, right? Like, oh, well, I'm just having one little bite of this. I'm just eating one little bite of that. And at the end of the day, you've eaten a whole cake or you've eaten a whole big thing of popcorn or you've eaten the whole family jumbo size bag of chips because you're just, oh, I'm just having one or two. I mean, that doesn't even, that doesn't even count. Oh, I love that one too, Jess. If you fast enough, you cannot overeat. Okay. They don't really have anything to do with each other. Fasting, overeating. I don't know why people think, oh, if you have a problem with binge eating, just start fasting. There's another issue that occurs to me with fasting too. And, and I intermittent fast every day. Um, but I think about this and I wonder about this. Do people think about things like people who suffer from anorexia when it comes to fasting? Because I think people with that unhealthy eating habit would come to the world of fasting and be like, oh, my people, none of us eat. Yes, <laughs> none of us, none of us eat. So I think that it's important to really assess our own eating habits and think about what we're bringing to the table when we keto because Nobody knows your eating habits better than you. Let's be honest, we lied about them. I lied about them. I never was honest with anybody about what I ate, when I ate, why I ate it. I lied. <laughs> liar, liar, fat pants on fire. Oh well, what do you do? Now I try to be honest with myself and honest with you guys about what I eat, when I eat it, why I eat it. If I'm craving something, I'll make it. I'll talk to you guys about that. But if we just simply ignore these issues and say, okay, um, I feel like binge eating. I, I feel like stocking up. I feel like hoarding food or hiding food. And then we just pretend we didn't do it. We're going to keep doing it. And it is a vicious cycle. I mean, it's it's harder to overeat on keto. It's harder to regain weight on keto, but it's not impossible. It is not impossible. So we do have to remember that we're very responsible for what's going on. I think in my old life, I shirked a lot of that responsibility about what I was eating, how I was treating my body, how I was preparing my food so that I didn't have to admit it to myself. Right? Same thing. If nobody knows, if I don't admit that, it, it never happened. It wasn't me. That never even happened. So <coughs> if you guys are struggling, I want you to know that this is something that we can talk about openly and honestly, and no one is going to judge you for admitting those things that you never wanted to admit. Cause I didn't want to admit them either. Trust me. Like, it's, it's very shameful for me to admit that I did things like, you know, buy six donuts and eat them before I came home so I didn't have to share. 
nobody needs to eat six donuts. Why do you think I never told anybody I ate six donuts? Because they would look at me and be like, what are you doing eating six donuts? You don't need six donuts. And I knew I didn't need six donuts. So if I didn't tell anybody I ate six donuts, then it would be our little secret and no one would know. <laughs> and I could come home and be like, oh, I had a donut today. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up and I'm going to leave you guys with my final thought. And it's this, only you can be honest with you about what's going on in your process and your journey. And I guarantee you, you are not the only one struggling at this spot. You're not the only one who's been struggling with this specific issue. Because I, I promise that absolutely everything I've been brave enough to say out loud, everybody's like, oh my God, me too. Me too, me too, me too. And I feel like if we start talking about these things, then we can start healing from them. So I invite you guys to post any issues that you're having in group so that we can have a talk about it. I would love to address these issues when they're coming up, but I don't know if you guys don't tell me you're struggling. Today's talk was based on a chat that I had in private message with a lady who's struggling. So when you guys reach out to me, this is how I know this is what we should be talking about. I had something else planned for today, but as soon as we started talking about it, I realized that it's not just her, it's not just me, and until we all stand up and say, hey, that's me too, then we all feel really alone. And I lived a lot of that. I think we all lived a lot of that. I think we let food separate us from people. So I say, let food bring us back together now and we can share both our struggles and our victories together. And every day we're working on building that healthy relationship with food that we never had. So I invite you guys to join me in the process and in the journey and share as a group what we're having a hard time with. I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing Thursday. And if you guys have any ideas for fun flavor Friday, what flavors are we in the mood for? Leave it in the comments. We're going to have some fun tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Bye, darlings. <laughs>